Hey guys, how's it going? Since we're starting a chemistry series talking about general chemistry and trying to lay the foundation to learning more about chemistry, we first have to talk about atoms. From here on out, we're going to be mentioning atoms and their properties to explain the majority of chemistry. Throughout our time studying chemistry, there's going to be different ways that we approach representing the atoms and molecules. But there's a fundamental question we have to ask ourselves. What makes a hydrogen atom a hydrogen atom? What's the difference between an oxygen atom and a nitrogen atom? For example, nitrogen is usually represented as blue and oxygen as red, as you will see in ball and stick models if you ever purchase them for organic chemistry. But look at the molecules here. That molecule on the right is has a nitrogen in it, where on the left, that molecule has an oxygen in it. What makes these atoms that specific type. And you might be thinking about the periodic table, but there's a little bit more into it. Periodic table was probably one of the first things you thought about when you started thinking about that you're going to have to start learning chemistry. The periodic table is going to become your best friend, even if you feel like you hate it now. One of the most important things about the periodic table is that you can find a lot about the properties of specific atoms through it. The periodic table is ordered in atomic numbers, and that isn't just some arbitrary number we came up with. The atomic number represents the number of protons an atom has. The number of protons an atom has gives it its property. The characteristics of an atom is in the nucleus or in the dense packed center of the atom, we have protons, which are positively charged, neutrons, which are neutral, and then surrounding the nucleus in kind of like a cloud in different energy levels, we have very small electrons that are negatively charged. What defines a certain atom to be a certain atom is the number of protons it has. For example, here we see helium with two protons and lithium with three. And in the periodic table, it goes hydrogen, helium, and lithium. So we can see how the atomic number is matched with the number of protons. Also, moving forward, we're going to see how the number of protons doesn't change if we have ions or isotopes. If we change the number of protons, we're changing the core atom. So if we were to remove a proton, we're not dealing with a lithium atom anymore. It's helium. One important thing to know is that the atoms listed on the periodic table are known to be in their elemental form, meaning that they're neutral. The number of protons equals the number of electrons. This is important because the electrostatic attraction between the protons and the electrons cancel each other out. So for example, neon here has 10 protons and 10 electrons, so there's no overall charge. But moving forward, we're going to see that atoms can lose electrons and even gain electrons without changing the core atom. If it's the number of protons that gives an atom its core properties, it's the electrons that are the contenders and chemical bonding. If it's the donating or accepting of electrons and ionic bonding, or the sharing of electrons and covalent bonding, we have the electrons of an atom as the actual participants and what happens between two atoms of a chemical bond. In the next video, we're going to talk about how atoms aren't typically in their elemental form. For example, lithium here is forming a cation by giving up or donating an electron. Now, even though lithium is donating an electron, it's still a lithium atom because of the number of protons it has. And the reason why it has an overall positive charge is because lithium has now one more proton than there are electrons. The cation of lithium has three protons making it a lithium atom, but only two electrons because it gave up one. This is why the overall charge of the lithium cation is positive. I mentioned how electrons can change and the core atom is still the same, but what about neutrons? If neutrons change, we form isotopes. Now, the difference between isotopes is weight. Electrons are usually so small that they don't really contribute to the overall weight of an atom like the neutrons and protons do. If we change the number of neutrons, we create a new isotope and the difference is weight. Now, 
when you look at the periodic table, you usually see the atomic weight. What this is, is it's the average atomic weight of all the natural isotopes that appear of that atom. For example, we have carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. But as you can see, carbon-12 is the most common with 99.89%. See, now there's an equation that we use that calculates the weight of each isotope and the frequency in which they appear naturally to take into account to find the average atomic weight of a carbon atom. Now, there's nothing desperately wrong with different isotopes, and sometimes they're used for different experiments. For example, deuterium is sometimes used when we don't want an as acidic hydrogen, for example, in a specific reaction. But we're definitely going to return to average atomic weight when we start talking about stoichiometry. The main drive for this video was to talk about some of the fundamentals of atoms and the basics of atomic theory. So moving forward, when we start talking about chemical bonds, valence shells, and a lot of the properties that come from atoms and how they relate with the periodic table and periodic trends, we have that foundation to be able to build upon. I hope this video was helpful and all the infographics that you see me use throughout this video are gonna be for free download really soon on my website. I'm finishing up a few things and then they'll be up for free. So if you wanna rewatch this video with following along with the lectures, I hope it helps and I hope you guys have a great day.